Here we go with a much requested show, this is Earthworm Jim 2, a game by Shiny Entertainment and started life on the Mega Drive, with the US release on November 15th 1995, followed closely by the European release of December 22nd, and the Japanese Sega Channel exclusive release in September 1996. Earthworm Jim 2 is the second and final game of the Earthworm Jim series developed by the original creators Doug Tenable, Dave Perry and Shiny Entertainment. The aim of the game is largely the same as the original Earthworm Jim, traverse through the levels in order to save Princess What's Her Name from Psycho. However, gameplay is much more diverse than the original game. While the majority of levels are still based on run and gun and platform game elements, Separate levels incorporate different gameplay elements, such as weapons. For instance, there are more types of guns to use, such as the auto-aiming gun or the bomb blaster gun, which takes out every enemy visible on the screen. Additionally, Jim's friend Snot travels with him, and he can be used to stick and swing to other slimy green surfaces or as a parachute upon jumping. Many levels play quite differently than the original game too. In the fourth level, the Villy people. The player must guide Jim defenseless in the skies of a blind cave salamander through intestinal passages while avoiding exploding sheep and hazards enabled in the floor and walls. The later part of the level suddenly switches to a game show format where the player has to answer nonsensical multiple choice questions that commonly have no logical correct answer. The Flying King level plays as an isometric shooter with Jim again on his pocket rocket, where a balloon with a bomb must be directed to the end of the level and defended from enemies in order to defeat Major Muckus. So as you can see, Earthworm Jim 2 does try to mix things up quite a bit from the original. Developed alongside the Mega Drive version was the Super Nintendo version. This was released in the US on the same day as the Mega Drive game in the States, November 15th, 1995, but was actually released later in Europe on January 25th. As is the case with all SNES games based upon Mega Drive originals, the play area is smaller due to the lower resolution. However, this version does have a few bonuses, such as alternative background art, an arguably better soundtrack, and the ability to switch weapons. I also don't think the differences in resolution has really hurt the game's looks, and the extra colour capabilities of the SNES really do help in producing a more pleasant looking world. Playability wise, I did find this version a little more sensitive at times when jumping from platform to platform, but overall it's a much better port than the first Earthworm Jim was to the SNES. Funky. 
here we go with the Sega Saturn port, which was developed by Screaming Pink and released first in the US in January 1996. Now we must remember that this is a port of a 16-bit game, so many of the assets are the same as those used in the 16-bit versions. However, Screaming Pink have gone that extra mile and given us a port with all new backgrounds in many areas. Some look really cool, such as the first stage with the awesome line scrolling reflection. Other areas, not so much, such as the new puppy love area background. The game also has been given a massive boost in sound quality, with higher quality and more speech samples, and an awesome Red Book CD soundtrack. So far this port is looking to be the best, but will it be the best overall? Tender. PC owners also got some Earthworm Jim 2 action on April 30th 1996 with this port by Rainbow Arts of all people. This comes as a double pack titled Earthworm Jim 1 and 2 The Whole Can of Worms. This port features an updated CD music soundtrack, more voice clips and redrawn graphics, but lacks the Lorenz soil level. I'm playing the good old games release here. I'm playing the good old games release here, which at the time of making this video cost 9 US dollars. It's a pretty solid port overall. Not as good as the Saturn version we just saw, but still a very nice entry into the series of ports. November 1996 saw the PlayStation release in Europe. This port is also by Screaming Pink, just like the Saturn game, but isn't a patch on the Saturn version. For a start, it doesn't have any gym animation at the beginning like every other version so far. Some of the graphical effects are missing. Stage 1 has no line scrolling reflection for example. The game also has a different balance to the difficulty, making it a little harder. But what's worse is how this port plays. It is lacking the fluidity of the Saturn port. Everything seems a little sluggish to react compared to all other ports so far. I wonder if Screaming Pink thought, ah sod it, this is only getting a PAL release so why bother. The Saturn version saw a PAL, US and a Japanese release. Here comes the crap with the Russian developed Game Boy Advance port by Super Empire, 
which came out first in the US on May 31st, 2002, and later in Europe on November 29th. This is based upon the SNES port, as are many Game Boy Advance games, but man, this is very poorly done. Just look at how choppy it runs. It's horrible. It plays like crap too. The controls are laggy and feel nothing like they should. The music is off key and sounds awful. Sound effects are out of sync or completely missing in many cases. How on earth this crap got a release, I will never know. For a bit of fun, let's check out a few unlicensed Famicom ports. This one is a port of the Mega Drive version. There are five levels based on anything but Tangerines, Inflated Head, Billy People, The Flying King and Utterly Abducted. The Puppy Love sub-levels are also included in this port. The player has infinite ammo and can use Snot Backpack, but the whip does not seem to be usable in this port. The graphics and music are taken from the original game and simplified. However, there are some graphical glitches and the music is not particularly faithful, but does seem fair for this type of soundtrack. Like many other Super Game ports, this game has no ending. After the player completes the final level, the game simply resets. And here is another Famicom unreleased port, this time developed by ex Sachin developers, known as Shinshin. This version is considerably more faithful to the SNES version than it is to the Mega Drive version. Graphics and music are taken from the original game, but the graphics are less accurate than those of the Super Games port. Although Shinshin's version has far more responsive controls and somewhat more recognisable music. It has several levels based upon anything but tangerines, granny chair, puppy love, utterly abducted, and a possible see Jim run 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 Jim run. The ending is an 8-bit screenshot of the well done cows, seen after each level in the original game. Unlike Super Games port, Jim can whip, although it's useless, and has limited ammo, but he cannot use the snot backpack in this version. And let's take a look at all those ports of Earthworm Jim 2, except the Famicom ports of course, because they're not official, running side by side. <laughs> 